Good afternoon, crafters. We are live. My name is Hannah Roxbury and I am the brand ambassador for Carnation Crafts. And today we are bringing you an extra special Facebook Live. It is the Christmas special. Now we've been building up to this for a couple of weeks. I've been releasing little tidbits, little sneaky peeks on our social pages for the wonderful, wonderful designs, okay? Um, there's a couple of people already logged in saying we can't see anything. I've only just gone live, guys. Goodness me. <laughs> I know you're all super keen and that's fantastic. So we have had so many comments, so much interest in our Christmas special. If you're familiar with Carnation Crafts, you may well know we did similar for a Halloween special. Um, so what we have essentially done is taken um, older dies, dies that may, you may already have in your stash, and given them a new Christmas inspired vignettes. They've had a, a new vignette issued. Those vignettes have been bundled today in a special deal of the day offer, which is available for 24 hours only. Those vignettes are available at the bundle price today only okay they will be available after that to buy individually or they are available now to buy individually but to get the special deal the today's deal of the deal hop on over to the website and order your vignettes now i'm going to take a look back through this one lots and lots of people joining us thank you for all all your wonderful comments and things and, and for spending the time tuning in today uh let's have a little look who have we got we've got tracy here uh jacqueline is watching while waiting for the grandchildren to come out of school Anne's here as well uh, Jan's here as well. Maureen's here too. Amanda saying, so looking forward to this demo. Well, actually, do you know what we did? Um, we, we put up a post in our Carnation Crafters Facebook group. Great, inspirational, super friendly group. Head on over there if you're not already a member. And I took pictures of the demos because I always create, no matter what show it is, um, be it Facebook Lives or indeed um, creating craft shows, we always create demos and then we have a few extras as well. And do you know what? I thought it would be a little bit of fun to take pictures of the demos and say, over to you guys, which ones do you want to see in today's Facebook Live? And overwhelmingly, everyone said, all three of them, please, Hannah. <laughs> So we're going to see how we go. Um, we're going to do all three in today's demo. And let us know in the comments, actually, how you like to view. Because normally with a Facebook Live special, we do, we split it up into three shows. So we do one in the morning, one in the afternoon, one in the evening. Um, this time around, just time dependent obviously we've only got the time for one but we thought we'd sort of pile all the demos into one for you guys as well um but let us know what formats do you like what would you like to see more of we do have a wonderful open forum over on our group uh full of inspiration full of friendly crafters as well it's a great place to interact and have your discussions and things like that um fifi's here from florida hi fifi karen as well um from alabama she says, good afternoon from Alabama. I have been anxiously anticipating this Facebook Live. Oh, that's lovely to hear. Um, Maureen says, I'm breaking up. I'm sorry, Maureen. I'm dependent on the um, internet speeds here. Um, obviously, we do our best to... Uh, it's really, really boring, actually. Um, test the streams before we go live and test the speeds of everything. Um, and obviously, we need to do it in and film it in a high quality so you can see all the details of what we're doing. Um, and obviously, that does mean sometimes the, the feed drops out. So I can only apologise. And um, um, hopefully, super fast broadband will be coming to this area soon. I don't hold out much hope because I do live out in the sticks. <laughs> Uh, Carol says, ordered mine at 2.30 this morning. Carol, that is keen. I love your style, though. Get in there early and get them downloaded. Uh, there are other Carols here. She always joins us. Hello, Carol. Uh, Christine, Marilyn, Sophie is here as well. Erin's uh, here from Jacksonville, Florida. Um, who else have we got? Patricia's here. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, absolutely flooded. I can't keep up with all the comments. It's wonderful. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, <laughs> Carla's here. I love you too, sweetie. She always joins us on our Facebook lives, which is lovely. Um, yeah, I've just noticed this actually. Um, there's someone, um, a spam post posting on the comments and things. Hopefully, someone from the team is watching, and we'll be able to deal with them because unfortunately, I cannot do all of um the technical side of it as well, which is possibly why the the feed is being a bit overwhelmed at the moment. So I can only apologise. Please do not click on any links unless they are from. Um, carnation crafts and that's verified links okay the these ones are, are spam and unfortunately it's just one of those things with facebook lives um there are sadly <laughs> and very annoyingly um people in this world who aren't particularly helpful hopefully as i say hopefully the team's watching carla if 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 you wouldn't mind just giving the, the 
team a call and getting them on that that would be awesome thank you guys very very much because it's hard obviously for me to then keep up with your comments as well fiona says loving the vignettes they are amazing i know isn't it fantastic and in fact you know what should we take a look at the dies that are involved and what i'm going to do for this i am going to swing the camera around so we're going to have top down view ha the officer on it thank you team <laughs> you are amazing okay so top down view um, we obviously I've got my first demo out ready to go, but I want to show you the vignettes in detail. So how I'm doing this is with the dies that they correspond to. There are lists. Um, if you're not sure which ones they relate to, we've put the um, die name as well as the collection you will find it in, in a list with a link so you can just check it on, on your stash and things like that. So first up, Christmas Rose. Now this featured as um, last year's second Christmas collection uh, back in June. And that is one of our Christmas vignettes. It's a Christmas rose, really, really pretty, lovely, rich, velvety colours. For the Christmas vignette, if I just pop that next to the artwork on the packaging, so the artwork is representative of the original colourway um, vignette, you'll see we've gone with a lighter kind of more pillar box red. We've then got this more sort of uh, frosty green blue to the leaves. Carla's on it as well thank you guys and the roses have this wonderful golden rimmed edge which almost looks like a shiny foil finish now all of the vignettes the colorways that are themed and chosen for these Christmas specials mix in and match in with the wreath maker okay so uh, for our Christmas um, shows this year we had the, uh, the wreath maker lots and lots of lovely tuck-ins and and elements and things like that to build your own Christmas wreaths. The colours for these Christmas vignettes have been chosen from those, so they all match in. Christmas rose. Next one we have got. Now this is wonderful. This is how just amazing carnation crafts are. This one is called Fern, and it's actually from the very first collection carnation crafts ever brought you on a crayon craft. This is called Before the Rainbow. It has the two ferns in a sort of... Um, or fern green is probably the best way to describe it. The Christmas vignettes introduce again that blue green frosty finish and it's got this wonderful sprinkling of like snow um really nice subtle detailing all over it again giving that frosty vibe. The next set my little fox has gone wandering so I can only apologize about that I don't know where he's gone but we have garden friends these are our super cute little friends from our garden safari collection and this time around we've given them a christmas makeover so again original vignettes in the background new christmas vignettes and we have the fox and the squirrel both sporting rather fetching christmas jumpers i mean they are something to behold and our sweet little hedgehog here in his christmas scarf as well it just gives you this wonderful warm friendly happy lovely feel about it next up um you have got just a glass now this is from the especially for you collection and the original vignettes are a clear glass with either like your white wine rosé or red wine in same with the smaller glass here as well for the christmas special <laughs> I just love this. This is a goblet, isn't it? This throws back right to those wonderful medieval Christmas feasts where you can imagine a swan making the centrepiece or a peacock on your table for your Christmas bird. You then got your goblet, your golden goblet, your chalice, if you like, absolutely full of honey mead. Just so wonderful, so refreshing, so just perfectly Christmas. And the golden glow on it, again, mixes in with those other vignettes. Next, we have got... It was perfect from your two kind. Again, original colourway in this sort of uh, lilac and yellow. This time around, it's given that Christmas twist. I love this. We have got reds and greens and also the sentiment there. It was perfect. Again, matching in with those previous vignettes. And I think it just goes to show we've gone right back to the start. We've gone with one of our mid collections. We've gone with one of our newest collections. We're going back sort of jumping back and forth between older and newer collections to give you the absolute most out of your die sets. This one, Lily of the Valley Frame, has had a huge amount of comments on um, our pages as well. Um, I think it's just a beautiful uh, circlet design and sort of interlocking flowers and leaves and things like that. Very, very pretty. You have then got the original colourway from Interspring, obviously spring greens, 
for your Christmas special, you've got the frosty blue green with the little um, lilies there. They almost are a little bit more reminiscent of snowdrops. And in fact, again, you've got that kind of snow shimmer, that kind of snow flurry look and finish on the die cut there as well. I'm going to have a quick scroll back before we go through the rest of the die sets included. Erin um, says, does a true gift, sorry, does the USB true gift to Christmas have many of the die images that you need? Is it the detail cut the same as using an actual die? Okay, that's a really great question, Erin. These vignettes have all been specifically designed to match size-wise with the dies that I'm showing you, okay? Because there's, there's a difference between the size files for dies and the size files for an SVG. Um, the True Gift of Christmas, it doesn't have these vignettes on them. These vignettes are brand new today um, and are for the dies I'm showing you. If you do have some, I mean, the which ones am I looking at? Which ones have been on? Um, the Fern Garden Friends... To, to, oh, knock myself out there. The Fern and Garden Friends, I think, is all of them. Oh, and sorry, and one of them that's coming up have been featured on previous USBs. Um, and if with a little bit of jiggery pokery, you could resize the SVG files to match in with these vignettes. Um, you also asked, sorry, I um, just need to refresh myself. Uh, is the detailed cut the same as using the actual die? The detailed cut will cut not only the outline of your USB image, but it will also cut all the detail internal lines like you would get on a die. The biggest difference is between a die and uh, a USB, apart from the fact obviously you can resize the USB files, um, is on a die, you when you cut, in, the die pushes into the paper, so you get a beveled edge along the edges of the vignettes. On a USB, uh, the scanner cut or your electronic cutting machines is a straight blade that's cutting through the paper so you don't get the beveled edge. Hopefully that is an answer there. Um, Pauline says, Christmas, love it, in the middle of putting up our mountain decorations. Yeah, I mean, when do you guys go? What's what's appropriate for Christmas decorations? I'm thinking we'll probably go 1st of December. I'm really looking forward to it as well. Um, Sharon says, when will the vignettes be on the website, please? Sharon, the vignettes are already on the website. Head on over, grab them. They are today's deal of the day. So they are up at a fantastic saving price. Um, a couple of people with Yvonne here and Carol saying, got the vignettes, great, love them, printing them out and cutting them out as we speak. Fantastic. Um, let's just see. Let's just see. Right. OK, let's go on with some more of the uh, vignettes. I want to whiz through these because we have got so many demos to do that it's crazy. <laughs> on the trail is next. This is our um, kind of like countryside scenic designs from the uh, blah, 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 Rural Charm die collection. So again, this is great for your scene building. This is going to add in those snowy lanes. You've got your, your bricks here with the snow settled on top. Your sign as well uh, with the snow settled on top of the sign, the trough, the sty, all those sort of things. But take a look what's written on the sign there. The signs pointing to North Pole. Isn't that just gorgeous? It's these little details that Carnation do so beautifully, which I just think brings the die cuts to life. Uh, next, this is fun. This is something um, different. This is the tags die from the Full of Love die collection. Um, I've only grabbed a couple of them here as well, but this one doesn't actually have a vignette. This one is designed, as you can see, it's just in pinks, designed to be cut out of your cardstock. But in true carnation style, what we've done is given you a whole host of golden vignettes, so the same gold that's on the chalice from uh, Just a Glass, to match in. So instantly, you're going to be able to transform all of your um, gift tags on your Christmas parcels and things like that to match in with the cards that you're going to be gifting, okay? We're going to be using the tags in a card demonstration as well. But look how, if I grab like some of the designs from the wreath maker, they're sized so they sit beautifully on the tags as well. It's all mix and match. Everything is designed with a specific purpose to match in together. We have got just a couple more. Wedding volume. This was requested uh, when we did the Halloween um, uh, specials. So we've got um, obviously our happy couple there. We've got our book die. We've got our florals. We are going to be using that in the, in the first demonstration. So we're going to get a good look at these new vignettes in that first demonstration. Um, but these have been recolored for your Christmas vibe. We've got really lovely, happy, smiley um, 
couple here as well. Their eyes are nice and soft. You've got a lovely sort of bud English rose lips to the bride there. But actually, it doesn't just have to be um, a bride and a groom. These almost look like um, traditional sort of Victorian carol singers. Perhaps if you just snipped away the bride's veil there, she would look like one of your sort of traditional Victoriana carol singers. On the book itself, We've also got new vignettes for that. You see the wreath maker vignettes there, the flowers and the berries and the hollies and things like that um, have been designed in as corner aspects. So you're giving texture in the background, which you can then build up with the wreath maker die cuts. And then you've got naughty list and nice list in the book. That's just so funny. I think that's really, really sweet. Who's going to make it onto the naughty list? Who's going to make it onto the nice list? Really great. And the final die set, which is included within your new Christmas vignettes, is Whitetail from Tranquil Times. Our beautiful stag in his forest originally now has a Christmas makeover as Rudolph and his red little nose. That is gorgeous. So, so sweet. So that gives you an overview of the dies we're going to be using. And rather going through all the steps of how to build and cut and things like that, which we normally do on a Facebook Live, because we're going to be fitting in so many demos, we're going to call it, sort of go through and just show you placement um, and how to finish the cards, OK? Um, and I will obviously try and um, answer as many of the different designs as possible. I know, uh, sorry, questions. I know Carla's on board. She's answering questions as well, which is really lovely. Thank you, Carla. Lovely. Um, da, 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 da. Michelle says she usually does December the 1st for her Christmas decorations there as well. Uh, Ruth says quick, quick dash back from collecting granddaughter from school. Haven't missed too much. Got the vignettes this morning ready to go. No, we're just sort of setting up the live feed ready to go to start our demonstrations, Ruth. So you haven't missed anything. But don't forget all of our Facebook lives we upload afterwards so you can watch back at any time. Um, let's have a look. Oh, Diane says, sorry I'm late. I, why are you always needed when you've been looking forward to something all day? Diane, don't worry, we haven't even started yet. You're fine. I know sometimes three o'clock is a bit of a funny time to start, isn't it? Because, um, you know, it's it's kind of middle of the day when you're picking up grandchildren and things like that. Uh, Marion says, oh, hi, are these vignettes for previous dyes or are they new for new dyes, please? These vignettes have all been specifically designed for dyes that you may well already have in your collection. We will pop up a list after the Facebook Live um, as we've just gone through them as well to let you know which collections they come from. They come right from the very first collection, um, right up to, um, I think, the most newest one, the most newest one. That's terrible English, Anna. Newest one is um, Fairy Tale Day. So you've got a whole span of different um, eras, if you like, from our back catalogue of dyes. Um, <coughs> excuse me. June says, I have the Fairy Tale set, which has the book dyes. Is it the same one you are using in this book? Yes, absolutely, June. This is the uh, wedding volume, uh, as we've just shown on the die set. All we've done is transformed it with brand new vignettes for Christmas. And actually, that's going to feature for our very first demonstration. So normally I'd show you the dies and which ones I'm using when I when I cut them out. But as I say, just for time purposes, so I don't keep you here all afternoon demonstrating, we're going to crack on with how we put these cards together. So what we have in front of us is the mats and layers, uh, so the outermost dies. With most of Carnation, what you'll see is you have your die set, and then you'll have like almost like a little halo around it, a secondary die around it. And that's what we call our mats and layers die. We're gonna take that die, we're gonna cut it twice from nice heavy cardstock. So this is 350 Perfect Smooth. The reason why we like to use 350 Perfect Smooth cardstock for our card bases is it's because it's a construction weight. It's a nice heavy base, which is gonna stand up to postage. And it's also gonna stand up no matter how much um, you kind of throw at it when it comes to layering up your dies on top. I've scored about an inch from the top, just clearing the curve of the book there and applied some red liner tape, some nice strong adhesive tape. And as we smooth those down, it means it's gonna create a tenth fold card onto which we can start uh, adding our layers, our book and things like that. Um, Diane says, hi Hannah, I'm trying to find the new Christmas, um, but I can't find them, thanks. Diane, literally they are the deal of the day. So if you head onto our website, um, you will see a pink banner across every single page, which says uh, deal of the day and um, click on that and it will take you to these vignettes because they are the deal of the day for today. 
or along the navigation bar on our website, you will see a little uh, link in red, which says deal of the day. If you click on that, that will also take you to the vignettes as well. So click on those and it will take you to the special bundle available for today only of these um, vignettes there. Hopefully that answers those for you. So for our book, we're going to mount our book vignette onto the uh, back part, sort of, um, what do you call it? Car blank here. And you see on the back, on the reverse of my um, die cut here, I've got red liner tape. So I'm peeling away the sheet, the carrier sheet on one. And then I've got sort of three mil foam sort of in the middle. And what I've done is I've just curved those pages lightly to give a little bit of lift to the design. I'm holding the book in place as I just lay down that side. Okay, so I'm sticking down just one side. I haven't removed any of the tape from anything else. It just means it gives you better placement when it comes to stick the rest of the card together. So along the spine of the book pages, again, another amount of red liner tape and just on the cover there as well. Both sides being a little bit curved. And then where you've got the lift, sorry, to the other shot there, where you've got the lift of the foam in the middle, it keeps that curve of the book pages. What you can also do with this particular die set, because you've got the cut line details all the way around, we can go in and trim and trim and trim to release the pages of the book. So all I'm doing is following the cut line details that were already laid down. I'm using a nice sharp pair of scissors to release those pips. Now I've demonstrated this before. I demonstrated this in Halloween. There are other videos on a, our Facebook page and also our YouTube channel on how to use the book die. Um, but again, I just thought it's a nice backdrop onto which to start building some of our Christmas theme. For the pages, again, give them a little bit of curve. And you'll notice here, I am working on our pro printing paper. Um, it means you get this lovely, sharp quality um, of detail and colour to our designs. Um, but it also means you get, um, A, it saves your ink as well, because it's not going to gobble up all the ink. The ink stays on the top of the paper. Um, and it just gives you a really good clarity of the colour as well. Um, You'll notice when you download your vignettes, you have two different versions. You have what we call our mirrored vignettes, which is what I use throughout the demonstrations, and I know Carla does as well, and also your standard vignettes. Our mirrored vignettes, as you see here, have the design on the front of the die cut and also on the back, okay? So you get the, the reverse, the mirror image on the back. Great if you want to do things like this where you're gonna see the back, because normally, traditionally, this would just be white, which would be quite, um, it would be quite distracting from your card design. Whereas um, this, obviously you've got the color, so it's not gonna distract at all. Um, if you want to just use standard, they are within the files as well. You just select which pages you want to print and print them off. I would always recommend using our pro printing paper to get that clarity of color. And for your mirrored vignettes, 120, because you fold them in half to cut them. If you need a little helping hand on uh, how to cut your mirrored vignettes, we have YouTube videos on how to guides as well. Now I'm going to do a little bit of placement before I commit to sticking and we're going to use that Christmas rose. We're going to use the roses and things from the uh, wedding volume collection and of course our bride and groom there. But we're just going to do a few little sticks onto the page. I've already stuck in place the almost like the gold um, edging for the pages onto the front pages as well. And the Christmas roses, they're just going to stick along that corner. They're going to build into this first corner that we're working with. Um, again, those roses have those trailing up in this wonderful golden colour, which of course matches in with not only the bells from the wreath maker, it matches in with the edges of the Christmas rose here, but it also matches in with the um, vignette for the chalice for just a glass as well. Really sweet little tentacles and things like that. I'm going to have a rose coming in the other corner as well. And look how when you layer it up, because you've got those colours behind, it already looks quite nice and full. So you don't have to go over the top um, too much if you don't want to with layers because you've got layers already printed onto the page itself. I'm um, just going to have a quick scroll back and make sure I'm not missing um, anything. There we go. No, I don't think we've got any questions coming in. I will keep checking, but I know the team are on it as well. So thank you, team. I'm also going to include... Um, 
a few just little tuck-ins from that wreath maker because you can see how well these blues and these greys and these kind of more wintry colours work so beautifully with the vignettes that we're using in the Christmas um, special here. These little uh, tuck-ins and things from the wreath maker I've rounded off using a ball tool and I'm sticking in place just using um, pin flare glue gel. The reason why we like to use pin flare glue gel on our makes is because it gives you a nice rounded finish. It dries clear and it gives you a little bit of wiggle room, uh, unlike using sort of uh, foam pads and things like that. You can literally go in and keep lifting and tucking like I'm doing here to change up the style and change up the look. Now, by adding in just elements from the wreath maker, you're already building up a really nice design on the pages. You can even snip them down. I mean, this is a little bit long, perhaps, for what I'm using it for. So you just snip off the edge and then tuck sort of the, the ringing bells into one side. Keep lifting, keep tucking, keep building to give you that wonderful sense of um, almost like a proper floristry kind of finish. Um, you've seen me do it in many, many, many um, Facebook Lives. Um, it's something I really am passionate about when it comes to you guys uh, having a go at lifting and tucking and, and layering as well, because it's a really fun thing to do. I might not necessarily use every single die cut I've got in front of me, but it is a nice luxury to have them all out ready to go. This one I might just snip down as well. Wonderful thing about Carnation Crafts is you don't necessarily have to use the die cuts as they are intended. They are yours when you get them home. And of course, you are welcome to use them as you wish. Things like these little um, sprigs of, of leaves here, which are part of the wedding volume, they just add in a wonderful bit of texture. But you'll see each time I'm adding a little pin flare, it just goes on the bottom. That then gets tucked in. And rather than overloading anything, it's just nice to build in a few little details. I think we'll we'll mirror the same sort of um, leafy design on the other side, but we're not going to load that one up. We're going to have more of a heavy look on the side with the Christmas rose. Just keep a little bit of balance. And again, tucking, lifting and tucking. And instantly you're transforming that edge. You're drawing down the detailing from that edge of uh, the flower there. Same with this one. A little bit of pin flare and a little bit of tucking and it's just as simple as that I mean, it's such a wonderful thing just to enjoy a little bit of time to lift and tuck and detail as you go now you could add even more i think let's go in with a few little um, more bells because i think the gold really sets the tone makes it feel very opulent for your christmas designs doesn't it, it matches in with the edge of the roses and the details as well so it's nice to give those little drawbacks to the the design there and those little nods to the clarity of the artwork but by tucking these things in you almost are becoming your own own florist if you like and look how by layering over the edge of the flowers and things like that it gives it a really lovely realistic finish and I actually I'm quite pleased with that I like how that's looking I'm not going to layer up any more of the details but of course we do need to include our bride and groom and of course I'm not going to put either of them on the naughty list because bless them you know they, they do look lovely and happy they can both go on the nice list this would make a wonderful christmas wedding card this would be very sweet for a special uh, wedding anniversary perhaps one of your friends perhaps yourself and your husband got married at christmas it's a very nice way to sort of mark that occasion if you like so there's our little chappy i'm just positioning him so he doesn't go over the edge of our page so our page still lifts up and then his beautiful bride and you can see in the colors in the feel of the design of these vignettes it's very much like you've got your um is it ermine fur you know that that wonderful sort of fur that father christmas has around his collar of his coat and things like that and then this wonderful velvety design to the rich red of her dress it's so so pretty those textures bring her costume to life so there we have one demonstration done featuring the uh, wedding volume as our backdrop. Remember, we've cut that base, that map and layer base from 350 Perfect Smooth cardstock. It's available on our website. And then we've built up the vignettes, allowing them still to be an opening book like that. So perhaps it's like a little Christmas story you want to tell. Perhaps it's, you know, uh, the night before Christmas, something like that. Perhaps it's almost like a little scrapbook, a little mini um, memento book of your Christmas. It's just a nice way to then display your um, ideas and your friends and your beautiful card samples on a book aspect. So the tintfold card 
making you a book design. I will of course show you all of the cards once we've finished at the end and I will take photos of them because we have a very very generous angel policy at Carnation Crafts. You're welcome to copy these designs and make and sell as well. Let's just check um, in the details. I'm not missing any um, questions here. Uh, a couple of people saying the sound's not going. I'm very sorry. Again, I can't, I cannot help the um, speeds of the internet here. Uh, Leanne says, is there a vignette of the book die without the words in this colourway, please? No, the only vignette is available is the ones we're showing as part of the Christmas, um, Christmas special. Um, Pearl says, well, Hannah from Velo Crafts is just trying to have I missed anything. I think the demo started late. Yeah, we did start the demo a little bit later. We were having a few a few technical issues on the page. Uh, Penny says, uh, I love in the Christmas colours. <laughs> Note, I use a British spelling for colours. You all are changing my spellings back to King's English. I love it, Penny. That's really funny. Yeah, they're really lovely Christmassy colours, aren't they? June says, have you shaped the flowers, etc. of the ball tool? Yes, as you'll see, they're, they're shaped. I don't ever put anything down on the um, cards as a flat um, finish because obviously I'm trying to fit in three demos in one demo time. Um, I'm not showing all the shaping techniques on each of the demos. I will show them on the third demo as well. So the next one, this one did get a lot of votes for it individually as well. This one is going to be a little easel card. It's going to feature a little hedgehog from Garden Friends and his just adorable scarf. Do you think his mummy hedgehog or his nan hedgehog, nanny hedgehog, knitted him that scarf? Because I really do think that looks like a wonderful homemade gift. It's absolutely perfect for Christmas. Again, those wreath maker vignettes are going to make an uh, appearance because don't forget the Christmas special vignettes have all been designed to work in with those colourways so everything works together. And we're going to go in with the on the trail um, vignettes to set our scene, our little Christmas story, a little sign for the North Pole. I love that. It's just the humour of Carnation Crafts is so perfect. Just unloading my demo bag. Everything has to be kept together otherwise it gets a bit chaotic. <laughs> behind the scenes we make little grab bags of them um, demos ready to go and they just kind of get piled in there and of course the centerpiece is going to be that lovely lily of the valley uh, die cut there as well a few little bits like so so what i've done on this uh design i'll just push those up so i can bring the main card into shot is this time around because we've got more mats and layers to play with than what we had with the wedding volume I've cut enough to create an easel card and we're going to take you step by step. One thing I will say, because the vignettes have been made to match in with that wreath maker, I know I keep saying it, but it's really key. It does mean your cardstock, your perfect papers and your backing papers from the Around the Tree collection, which was this year's Christmas collection, which is what the wreath maker launched alongside of, are also going to match in with your Christmas special vignette. So those backing papers, the one I'm using here, sort of the starry Christmas night sky, these are free download from our website as well. So if you just hop on over to Around the Tree, you'll find those there. Lily of the Valley. If I grab, if I can find the die next to me somewhere. Where are you, die set? It's gone walkies. I only put him down a second ago. There he is. In the die itself, as we mentioned, you've got mats and layers. So you've got your largest mat and layer. You then have a smaller mat and layer, mid-sized mat and layer, and then your smallest mat and layer. Three different sizes of mats and layers to create our card bases from. For the card base itself, we're going to use the biggest die cut in here, as we did with the uh, wedding volume, the first demonstration. This time around, I'm going to make an easel. So we're going to cut it three times. Again, from that 350 Perfect Snood cardstock. If you're looking for a construction weight card that you want to be able to layer things onto, our Perfect Smooth in 350 weight is absolutely ideal. Base layer, okay? The base layer of our easel. We're going to grab one of those starry night skies I've just showed you, which has been cut from the Perfect Papers from um, around the tree and then has the around the tree backing papers on. I've got all the way around the edge, finger lift tape, because we want the inside of the card to be stuck flat. And all I'm doing is taking the carrier sheet of the tape and folding it over like a little tag. That then leaves me hands-free just to line up this, um, this particular 
die cut. And because you've obviously got all these different uh, variations on how it all works together, you've just got to turn it until you find the positioning of the mat and layer. Once we've got it set, we can stick that down with our finger lift tape and just push that into place. That leaves us hands free to peel back and remove the carrier sheet from the tape all the way around that layer like so. Izzy says, are the vignettes on the website now? If yes, what do I put them? What do I put in to get into them? Izzy, these are our deal of the day for today only. They are a bundle at an extra special price. If you head on to our website, across the top of each and every single page is um, the wording deal of the day. Uh, it's like in a pink banner. Uh, details like click here to see today's deal of the day. Click on it and it will take you to the page for the deal of the day. You can also navigate to the deal of the day um, from the uh, navigation menu bar on our website too, and it will bring up the deal of the day. Um, Erin says, the dies that create the book, are you supposed to separate the inner corners and outer layers when you receive them or leave them together? Oh, I'm not quite sure on what that question means, um, Erin. Um, but if you, if you mean, do we do we break apart any of the dies? Um, Carnation Crafts don't don't do dies where you have to break them apart. Basically, uh, the only the only omission to that would be the number sets where you can take the middle out of the numbers should you wish to. So no, leave them together because then they fit the vignettes as a standard as well. Um, Val says, what do you need to look for on the website? If you go to our website, which is carnationcrafts.co.uk, I know a couple of people um, at Carnation have just popped the link up there. Carla's just popped the link up there to the deal of the day as well, so you can grab these vignettes. Our next layer to build the pop-up mechanism to our um, easel card that we're making is we have cut that same outer layer, so the same white layer that we cut before, from 350 Perfect Smooth cardstock once again. Because we're making a card, we need a nice heavy weight in the background. We've scored about half an inch down from the top and you'll see as I put as I turn that back you've got your red liner tape just the same as the first demonstration is because it's a nice strong adhesive it's great for construction along the middle of the card shape here we have scored as well and when we open the card that creates our hinge mechanism but of course you need to be able to put like a sort of a larger front on the card to be make it usable and so we cut another layer of 350 GSM Perfect Smooth cardstock. We line that up like so, hold it in place, just peel back an edge. And again, we've got the red liner tape along the bottom only of that score line. So no tape on the top, just on the bottom. Reason being, obviously, if you tape the top to the top, it's not going to have the pop-up mechanism working. So I'm just going to use my pokey tool to go in and remove the carrier sheet and that's that bottom stuck. It now means I can go in and just take some time to remove the other elements of carrier sheet as well. And then once again, oops, just making sure that's kind of even, kind of even there. Smoothing that down into place just so that um, tape can grab hold there as well. When we come to open, you've then got this wonderful pop-up effect. I just love that. When you open it and you're revealing that night sky, isn't that gorgeous? It's such a beautiful backdrop onto watch, which we can start layering up. Speaking of night skies, we need those same mats and layers, same framing devices that we've used in the, in the bottom layer there on the top. So once again, we're just going to position that. We've then folded the carrier sheet of the tape over one side, allowing a little tag that we can then pull and smooth down, which means that our die is then in the correct position, or die cuts in the correct position for our mats and layers as well. Wendy said, I forgot you were on, can I watch this later? Yes, absolutely, Wendy. As with all of our Facebook Live demonstrations, you can watch back at any time. We upload them both to our Facebook page and also to our YouTube channel. One thing I will say, and I do say it in every Facebook Live, so you don't miss the Facebook Lives, if you want to receive a reminder of the Facebook Live events of when we go live, sign up to the event. Uh, you can access that through the events page on our brand page, the page you're watching this on now. Um, and we do obviously share links into the group as well. If you click on, um, I think it's either um, going or something like that or interested, it will give you a little notification on Facebook as to when we're live. So hopefully that will that will save you perhaps potentially missing any further designs. Um, or Facebook Live events. 
Now, this has created a really pretty starry night background for our story to go on. So this is really a story card because yes, we are gonna use that frame. And once again, just place and turn until it falls into position because the mats and layers are designed to hug around the edge of the design. And actually, do you know what? Isn't that gorgeous? That with a little Merry Christmas sentiment across the front is just sublime. It's just so lovely. It really doesn't need much more than that. But being a Facebook Live, I do want to give you ideas. I do want to give you inspiration. So within our little frame, within our little story, we're going to build a little world. We're going to build a little Christmas world where our hedgehogs is going to live. And he's going to have his little uh, wall, if you like, behind him. So this is from Rural Charm. You'll see as I'm layering, the wall itself is interlocking. So yes, you've got a small section and you cut it out, but you can cut it again and interlock the bricks and get sort of one whole long expanse of wall, which I think is really lovely. Of course, you can include a sty within that as well. If you wanted to, you have options within this. But I think what we're going to do is uh, try and keep this as straight as possible. So one thing with easel cards is to always check the placement before you start committing to stick. That I know is um, straight for me. And then we can place our little wall just like so and just see if we can place it so we can just sneak in that little sty as well because I think it's quite nice to break up the wall with a little sty and actually let's go in with the sty first because these are going to be in the background I am going to use my everyday glue this is my everyday uh, Wednesday glue because it's Wednesday <laughs> Again, just a little bit of humour from Carnation Crafts. And essentially, this is a nice uh, low water content white glue, uh, which means we can use it to stick flat on the backgrounds of our cards. And because it's got that low water content, it's not going to ripple your vignettes. It's not going to cause any distracting textures in the background where you don't want them. OK, start in first. That gives us then a base onto which we can start lining up our wall as well. Nice little nozzle on the everyday glues. And it does actually twist down and twist open as well. Um, it just keeps everything nice and clean as well. Just overlapping that wall ever so slightly so it looks like that sty is built into the wall. And same again, we're just going to add in oops, another little bit of wall too. And just slotting. So you see how they beautifully just slot together. You can't even see the join really when you're looking at them. It just makes a, a one whole expanse of wall, which is very, very sweet. Um, I am going to ground that wall. So rather than having it floating in essentially space at the minute, because you've got the stars underneath it as well, which does make me giggle a little bit. I'm going to put um, in the background, I'm going to snip them, but we're going to have some of the flowers just in front of the wall. So it makes it look like these are growing in front of the wall there. So I said I am going to snip them. Of course, you don't have to use uh, the Carnation Crafts elements all as intended. They are yours once you get them home and you are welcome to snip into them and change them up however you see fit for your uh, card designs. Uh, just a little bit of dab of uh, white glue on here as well. Come on, you little white glue. Oh, that's a little bit much. And then we can layer. So I'm layering the flowers so they line up with the bottom of that wall. So it all starts making sense rather than having the wall floating in space. It is now starting to ground. It is now starting to look like it is just where it's meant to be in the universe. And having them again coming over the edge. So I've kind of extended them a little bit with a little gap in the middle. That gap is perfectly placed because of course our gorgeous little hedgehog is going to make an appearance in this card as well. And then get a shape. So as I've mentioned within the, the last demonstration, um, I have gone ahead and shaped most of the designs uh, in the first two demos, just so I can bring you three demonstrations in one. This little chappy, we're just taking our thumb and forefinger and rounding him off, but giving him a much more rounded appearance, just softly. If I wanted to go in and even put more detail into him, I would use my Fidenz foam mat and my ball tools as well. Tanya says, hello, my lovely, gorgeous demo. These colours are so Christmassy and very classy. They are, aren't they? They're very pretty. Uh, the only dye I needed to order was a wine glass. Thank goodness. Um, <laughs> you did make me laugh, Tanya. She says, thank 
goodness, as my order of Elevate Foam nearly wiped my crafty budget. Yes, wasn't that exciting watching Carla and her, her stickers, her Elevate Foam on the scan and cut as well on her USB shows this week. It was fabulous. Um, so great to see her and hope you and the boys are well. Yeah, they're fine. Thank you, Tanya. I hope you are well too, darling. Uh, she says, is the wool from the Royal Charm collection? Yes, it certainly is. The wool and the sty and the little flowers and then this cute little sign, which is to the North Pole, which is just going to go on every single Christmas card I'm going to make, I think, is brilliant for that. So I'm not going to stick my hedgehog down. I'm just going to place him and then I'm just going to find the orientation. There we go for the lily of the valley. And look how as soon as you add that, you're just ooh, focusing in the look. You're just framing everything so beautifully. All of the attention now is on our little hedgehog sitting beautifully in the middle of our frame. For the lilies, uh, rather than going in with my pin flare or my, my glue jar or anything like that, I have chosen to use foam pads on these. Um, and they are going to give me a stability of all at the same height. Just removing the carrier sheet on those. And you see, even when it comes to placement of things, the team think through where everything goes. There's enough room to place things like our foam pads. Again, just going to go in and find the orientation like so, and then just layer that down. So that, that die set in the background just hugs that beautiful frame so perfectly. A little hedgehog is going to have a little bit of pin flare on his tummy just to lift him up. And if you, got, you guys haven't seen the, the recent Facebook lives, you may not be aware that Carnation now do have stock of pin flare on our website. So it's well worth adding that into your basket if you are thinking of making a purchase today. Tucked his little toesies in beneath the frame and just slotted him in. So now he's got a background. He's got a backdrop. It's almost like he's sort of wandering down the lane, if you like, and he's there with his little uh, toesies under the frame. We're going to add in that sign in the foreground. So bringing in that sign against the backdrop starts tying it in. You've got the mirroring of the colours of the wood between the sign and the sty. So nothing looks out of place. Everything looks like it's meant to be. Um, that's going to go down first. So I am going to use my pin flare. And what I've done is I've just lifted the... Um, the directional signs, if you like. I've just lifted those a little bit to give them a little bit of height. Remember, we're working on those mirrored vignettes, so you can absolutely choose to give things more shape, give them more dimension, give them more height, because it's not going to detract from the overall look of your card. A little bit of pin flare just in two points to hold that in place. And then what we can do is start building in um, almost like a little bit of um, detailing behind and around. So I'm not going to, again, I'm not going to commit to sticking just yet. I'm going to find the look that I want to go for. And these Christmas uh, wreath maker tuck-ins and things like that, rather than using them as a wreath within these demonstrations, I'm going to use them as, as tuck-ins and framing devices because I think it works so beautifully having these little, uh, little cut die cuts and things just shaping out that frame. Yeah, I think a little bit of colour as well, just to draw in the colours from his scarf. But let's have a little bit of fun and also include the little present there. So this is the present from Your Two Kind. It's called It Was Perfect. And that's almost kind of telling the story that our little hedgehog is just saying thank you for a little gift, gift he may have received at Christmas. Again, wonderful colours, drawing in that red from the background. And we're going to place our gift like so. From our gift, we're going to have a few of these little die cuts coming out. Again, just making in more, oops, detail. Try not to squidge it all over the frame, Hannah, if at all possible. These, because of the nature of them, because they're the same colour as the um, Lily of the Valley frame from Into Spring, they're not going to be too overwhelming. They're going to kind of subtly go into the background, but it's just layers like this that give you a little bit of shaping around one corner. Once again, I do tend to work in corners when it comes to cards and designs, even on circles, which... I know it doesn't really make much sense grammatically, but I think you get the idea. We're adding in a corner to this where we're going to load up a few of these little vignettes just for detailing and stylistic reasons. Um, Michelle said, uh, because I lost your volume earlier, I'm not sure if you said which backing paper you have used, please. Yes, absolutely, uh, Michelle. This backing paper I'm using is from the Around the Tree backing papers. Um, the back, Both the backing papers and the perfect papers from Around the Tree are the same colours, the same colour family as these vignettes, because the vignettes have all been coloured to match the colours from the Wreath Maker die set. Hopefully that answers your question there, Michelle. 
pine cones into the background again, drawing in those colours from the hedgehog and, and the, the wood, things like that. Let's go in with some mistletoe as well. Mistletoe is always great at Christmas, isn't it? Having the option to choose what you want to work with within these designs just makes it so much more fun as well because adding in little bits and bobs like this means that each card's going to be different. You can use the same elements, but each and every one is going to be inherently different because you are using um, different ways and it's almost nigh on impossible. I mean, if you wanted to sort of slave over it, you can, of course, get uh, the same layouts and things going, but it is a lot of fun just to tuck in different elements and add to them as well. Just trimming those down. As I say, you don't have to use the dies in their entirety, the die cuts in their entirety. We're just snipping them down, making them a little bit more um, perfect for your tuck-ins. So we can lift and tuck as needed. Again, bringing in that red from the scarf, bringing in that red from the presents. It's these little style elements where you're adding in little nods to colour that keep um, a wonderful rhythm in your card. Now, I know that sounds like a strange thing to say, but it's a repeat pattern, so it's easy on the eye, and the eye can kind of make sense of it as well. A few little more florals, just building up that base layer there, tucking and lifting. I am going to include the sentiment across the head the top because I think it's a very pretty sentiment. Um, but again, I'm going, to cut, I'm going to stick that using our Everyday Glue. I'm going to squidge out a little bit of Everyday Glue and then use my glue applicators. I'm not sure if these are back in stock yet. And um, I know a couple of Facebook lives ago, they were ordered and they are due, but essentially uh, the glue applicators allow us to just pick up tiny amounts of glue and get into precision areas on the die cuts without leaving any sort of uh, mess around anywhere. It just makes it a little bit easier to control your glue. It was perfect. It's gonna go across the top of our present there. And I might even just sort of finish it with maybe um, a little bit of a snowdrop in the foreground as well, just to bring back in the layers that we've used in, in the background there. So everything's then nicely matched. Yeah, I think that works well. Because I'm using the mirrored vignettes, I've got a choice of which way round um, we use them. I see a lot of people saying, oh, you know, I don't get the same finish on the back as what I do on the front of the mirrored vignettes. You're never going to simply because of the nature of how dies cut. Obviously, if you're cutting down into the card, it's going to give you that beveled edge on the front of the die cut. On the reverse, all you need to do, um, a lot of people say like run it through your die cutting machine again with a copy paper or something like that just to flatten it off, but treat it the same as you would the front. Ball them, use your ball tools, round them off, and it gives a really lovely finish just lift the edge of the sentiment, tuck in our snowdrops, have them framing the sentiment there. So, so pretty. And I love that kind of loaded filled to the one side of the card. Now, obviously being an easel, it would have been an idea to keep checking, <laughs> checking that this is all level. It's fine, we're using glue. We can always uh, just adjust it afterwards. Being um, an easel, you need a little stopper. So for this, I have chosen the uh, Ponsettia, Ponsettia from the wreath maker again, again, using that red. So when we open the card fully, you've got triangles of red in that little bottom corner, just sort of balancing against the blue in the background there. This, because it's a stopper used to open the front of the card and keep the card open, I have put a little bit of foam tape on the back. I think that's like two mil foam tape. I've laid up one mil twice. Just placing that in and you know we can go in and place die cuts around it just so it matches the front of the card you've got that same tucking aspect going on um, all the details just like so I am very drawn to these kind of um, almost like I guess they're bare branches aren't they I love the texture that they introduce into your card design it might be that you prefer a different kind of texture these demonstrations are purely to give you a little bit of inspiration. As we've said, it is a totally open angel policy, so you are welcome to take those ideas and use them as you wish. However, if you wanted to take just elements and change it up to suit your crafting, to suit your needs, to suit your finish, if you like, you're more than welcome to do so. That's the, the joy of being able to bring you live demonstrations as well. So again, a few little more tuck-ins. I managed to put glue everywhere all over that and I don't even know where it came from, which is often a worry. You know, me and glue are, are not always good friends. I do tend to get it all over myself and very little on the card where it's needed. 
Okay, so just mirroring what we've done on the other side, tucking and lifting. I think that looks great. Um, but again, I will lift that up to camera and afterwards I will take photos of everything. A little easel card, lovely sprig and spray of flowers in one side. You've got the detail thing from Rural Charm in the background, that little sign, my absolute favourite from these new vignettes saying North Pole. And of course, our happy little hedgehog just sitting pretty in the foreground there. Let me have a little um, scroll back, make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, Joanne says, where's the wreath dye from? That wreath dye that I've just used, uh, if you mean the lily one, is Lily of the Valley from Into Spring. If you mean the tuck in, so the holly, the poncettia, the branches, the mistletoe, etc., the wreath maker is available on our website um, and it makes it literally makes wreaths as the name would suggest, but you can use it as we're using it in this demonstration for tuck ins. Uh, Janet says, Hannah, sorry, where do I find the wall, the signpost, etc. from? Those are uh, on the trail from Rural Charm Collection. Okay. Final demo, guys. Demo number three. I've almost fitted it into the normal demo <laughs> time slot. It's up to an hour now. But, you know, we're not done badly. I know you guys were keen to have all three demos. But again, as I said, let me know in the comments, um, what do you prefer? Would you prefer them split over um, three demonstrations? Would you prefer it split in one day? Would you prefer it over two? Let us know what format works for you and what you guys, you guys like seeing as well. So this time around, we're going to make um, a nice large size card. Um, I'm just, again, getting all the bits and bobs out, ready to put the card together. We've got tags going on in here. We've obviously got the wreath maker again, the little tuck-ins, for example, all going into a pile in front of me. We've got detailings. We have got, where has he gone? Let's just check where Whitetail's gone because we need him for this demonstration. Where are you, Whitetail? Gone, just gone. Oh, I'll have to look for him in a minute. Do you know, it's not even that messy. <laughs> I've actually packed for tomorrow's show already so it shouldn't be that chaotic but I'm making it feel as chaotic as what it is I'm not really sure why this time around we're going to show you how to incorporate um, a little bit of um, an off-center design if you guys have watched any other of my um, uh, shows that we do you'll know that when it comes to cards I very much insist on doing off-centre design because it's so hard to get the detailings as the um in the centre and if you get it just off slightly it's obviously off whereas if you get it off centre on purpose it makes it more of a design feature so we're working um on let's think what size is this I think this is 10 by 7 card shape I will measure it afterwards um and I just wanted to bring you something that wasn't from um, one of the card shapes, so i.e. where we've used the Interspring uh, Lily of the Valley, where we've used the Wedding Volume, the first ones. I wanted something more of a traditional card base in, in that kind of sense. So again, I'm working on nice heavyweight cardstock. This is just a card blank, just scored down one side to create, as, we, as we've mentioned, a more traditional card blank design. Onto this, we want to put in our mats and layers. This gorgeous, I mean, this is Christmas in a cardstock, isn't it? Isn't it fantastic? This is the perfect papers. So with each um, collection, we try and bring you um, a coordinating pack of cardstocks. They're 300 GSM. You normally get six colours and eight sheets of each within each of the collections. And this one, this perfect paper, as we have mentioned, is from Around the Tree. So the vignettes that I'm using, the coloured artwork I'm using, is all designed to match in with the colours from the Around the Tree collection. So the perfect papers there are the ones that match in just beautifully. So you see, I've taken the carrier sheet of the tape and folded it over the edges. I'm using finger lift tape because we want this layer to be nice and flat all the way around. That red is spectacular. That just sings Christmas. Should we make it even more Christmas? <laughs> Our next mat and layer. Cut down ever so slightly from the one before. Same process, taking the carrier sheet of the tape and folding it over the edge of the card to create our tabs, which will allow us to align and then peel away to get our mats and layers, our framing devices on our card central. This gold is like um, almost like a satin sheen kind of finish. It's, it's not glossy, it's not sort of mirrored or anything like that, but it's got a beautiful glow to it. This is one of the cardstocks from our perfect finish 
card packs in the gold, unsurprisingly. Um, but I just felt it matched so wonderfully with the uh, designs in those wonderful gold colours from the new vignettes. I just had to use it within the demonstration. So I'm holding that cardstock in place as I peel away the carrier sheet of the tape. I can then smooth that down, which means I can then safely remove the other edges as well. All we've got now is this very, 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 very slim matte layer of that bright red and then this expanse of gold. Slim mats and layers give a very elegant feel to your finish and um, card, similar to what we use on the on the card design. So the mats and layers on the card we've just done here, they're very slim. There's a very small amount of room between them. It just makes things feel much more um, just luxury, really, doesn't it? I'm just having a little ferret off to one side to see if I can find my other die cut that I've got to use in this demonstration which hopefully hopefully will come to light at some point because otherwise we're going to have the main feature of this card there he is he tried to run off he said Hannah I've got important deliveries to make and you're taking so long over these demonstrations there he is Rudolph we needed him <laughs> does anyone else make up little stories for their die cuts is it just me might just be me I'm hoping Carla does it as well our next layer once again, we're drawing back that really bright gold and creating just a very, very, very slim matte layer. This has been printed on our pro printing paper. It's 170 GSM, so slightly heavier weight than what I'd recommend um, for our mirrored vignettes. But because we're using it as a card background, I wanted a little bit more sturdiness, a little bit more weight. Once again, this design, this backing paper is one of our free to download backing papers as part of the Around the Tree collection. Now you'll see, along the back, I've popped my foam tape. This is one mil foam tape. All these little struts along the middle are there just to hold the cardstock up, okay? Only reason they're there. They don't need to be peeled away. We don't need to worry about getting the backing off of those. We just need to stick the edges on, like so, as you see me do with the finger lift tape. Once we've then place that we can then take the other side off I'm not going to worry about those middle ones they will hold in place they're just there for support of the center of the card so the center of the card doesn't sag beautiful beautiful backing papers lovely almost like twinkling lights a little bit like um you know when you're you're putting up your Christmas decorations you get a wonderful twinkling effect from your Christmas tree lights it's that kind of look to the background of these Carl <laughs> says just you that makes stories up you lovely little weirdo <laughs> <laughs> Carla, you love my stories. <laughs> okay, so for this, this card design, remember what we're trying to do is create this wonderful, ace, oh, I think asymmetric is the right word, asymmetric design with the filigree from the um, wedding volume die set. Now I'm just going to turn that so it sits properly. So for this I've chosen to have the uh, diamond sort of as a diamond rather than as a square if you placed it the other way around like so you could have it as a square as well I don't know why but I just felt diamond was more Christmassy it might just be me and my weird little stories again but I just felt that felt a little bit more Christmassy so this gold colour is chosen to match in with that gold in the background and then in the matte layer that I'm using behind it is for the repeating layers of the first matte layer if I was to start building my card, in fact, I will show you instantly, although it does look pretty, because you've got a heavily patterned background fighting against a heavily filigree design, they both kind of get lost. Adding in your matte layer from your perfect papers gives you a pause between the background and a placement for your foreground. It lets the two work in sync, it lets them work in harmony, and they both have as much right as each other to be on the front of the card, okay? What we're also gonna do is layer up. Oh, Christmas roses, love them, love them, love them. And for the first time in these demonstrations, I'm gonna introduce the um, fern from Before the Rainbow. So again, just sort of curving around the edge of that card there. Similarly, you've got two sizes in the ferns within the same die set. The smaller one curved around the other. So instant you're hugging that wonderful design. So you're creating this element, this area into which our beautiful deer, that's got a little bit of glue on his back now, is gonna be 
in the foreground okay so instantly you're transforming you're giving him a frame you're creating a frame from the flowers and things like that really really pretty we're going to go ahead and commit to sticking this filigree down i'm only going to apply a little bit of glue um, and we'll use the the everyday glue for this on the center of that panel okay we're then going to find where that sits so you've got those little sort of pointy bits if you like on your north south east and west for alignment and we're going to stick that in place okay i'm not going to the painstaking level of sticking all of that filigree down because actually if we go round and lift and sculpt the middles of these filigrees what that's going to do is create wonderful shadows behind the design it just gives you a little bit more undulation it gives you a little bit more texture to the background of your design it gives you something a little bit different now just making sure that's central once again foam foam is going to lift this layer from the background giving it even more placement on the front of the card giving it a little bit more prominence and again it just gives you that wonderful drop shadow as well so i'm going to place so we've got north south east and west in the correct positions but i'm going to ever so slightly bring one edge over the edges of the mats and layers there's a very good specific reason why i do that again it's all about placement it then connects your foreground ever so subtly with your background okay it's not over the top it's not obvious obvious but it just joins those layers together it's those little aspects that we can include in our um, designing when it comes to cards that just start drawing everything together and making it feel like it comes together and there's a purpose for it now before i stick down i did mention it at the start um my first two demonstrations i'd already shaped the vignettes for these i haven't shaped them yet because i was keen to show you how we do that it's so going to take my pokey tool i have already obviously stuck the layers together but we can run our pokey tool like so and curve out the petals of our Christmas rose. Christmas rose being part of last year's Christmas collection, Christmas time. Okay, it just gives you a little bit of shape, it gives you a little bit of deta detailing. Same again with the leaves here. Let's just twist and turn them over the edge of our poke tool to give them more dimension. It gives them a more realistic look. Okay, so our leaves, our beautiful leaves and things are gonna go to that side. Same with the fern just twist and turn that over the pokey tool to give it shape and same with the smaller little aspect as well so these ferns remember these are the new christmas vignettes from the dean of the day and they have this wonderful snow flurry finish to them which is just so so pretty we're going to place the roses down first but because we want a little bit of height and we want to tuck things in behind them i'm going to load up my three-dimensional glue gel my pin flare to the centers of those flowers and it's going to sit just off the side of that circle there remember what we said in the um easel card demonstration we are creating a corner which i know sounds a very silly thing to say when we're looking at um circles but essentially we're creating a corner on this circle so we're going to tuck that longer line of the uh fern in again letting it come over the edge of those mats and layers remember it's all about the connections at this point and then a little bit of glue gel just to hold that top there so you don't have the heavy weight of that vignette pulling that leaf down when you stand it up. Um, obviously, uh, when, when it comes to the pin flare glue gel, um, allow a good 24 hours drying time on these um, before you pop them in the post or anything like that. Same here, we're going to just pop in this leaf underneath that side oh, it's got very sticky underneath here very quickly i think it's because it's quite cold in my studio normally it doesn't doesn't grab that quickly but that's fine that's fine that will work so now you're um making a feature of that that circlet design the circlet design being from the wedding volume by framing it with the shaped leaves from the fern linda says hannah where is the christmas rose from the christmas rose is part of last year's christmas collection which was called Christmas Time. Um, <laughs> so that makes me laugh. 
Jeanette says, oh dear, I seem to be filling up a basket as we are bread and dripping next week. <laughs> and Carla, uh, you know, quite rightly has got on board with that and said bread and dripping though. Yum, 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 with a love heart face. Um, I have to agree. Do you know what? There's nothing better than comfort food, is there? It's just fabulous. So wreath maker again remember i know i have mentioned it in in each demonstration but it's just key these vignettes are designed to match in with the colorways so as i place down those um pine needles you see how they match in color to the ferns as well which is just really really pretty and then just add that in so i'm going to mirror almost probably not completely but it's just creating a backdrop. You can hardly see those little, little little details. You know they're there. And each time your recipient of the card looks at it, they find other elements. And I think that's what's so fun about when it comes to uh, lifting and tucking and adding in your designs. I thought you were going to make an appearance. I could hear you. I could hear you, you little monkey. I'd left you asleep, hadn't I, on the sofa? Excuse me, that's my cat morph. Um, again, viewers of our Facebook Lives will know he is very keen in getting involved in pretty much everything I do. Um, and normally comes and just plonks himself down, don't you, mate, in the middle of the demo? Yeah, you can say hello in a minute. We're almost we're almost done. Mistletoe next, again from the wreath maker. Just, just tucking those in. I think now what we need is just a little bit of a different colour, just in the background, to break those colours up. So again, snipping down the length of the twig designs, lifting and tucking like so. And each time I do something on one side, I'm going to repeat that same process, snipping away, lifting and tucking on the other as well. Just like so. Is anyone else making their Christmas cards alongside me? Has anyone else got their Christmas card? I bet you guys are all really, really, really on it and have already done your Christmas cards. I'm so envious of people <laughs> who are so much more organised than me. I have got all my Christmas cards still to make. Okay, I'm going to go in, I'm going to show you how we ball out actually, because I think that's a good little thing to include. Dense foam mat and our ball tool. And so use the size appropriate for the die cut you are balling out, but it's just circular motions and to bring those edges of cardstock up and it gives you dimension. It gives you a lovely rounded feel. We're just going to twist those back so they look like they're sitting on our branch. Same with the one we snipped away, just balling those out to give those pine cones a more uh, realistic full look to them. Now this is where we're going to deviate just slightly from having those matching sides. We're going to go in with the single pine cone at the bottom, probably just behind the pine needles there, just having the one just peeping through, like so, and then have the double at the top as well, just giving in. It may seem like it takes an awful long time to layer and things like that, but don't forget I am talking around uh, the demonstration as well as we go when you when you've done this quite a few times it does become second nature on where we place things what we use why we use it and the looks we are achieving now i said in a minute <laughs> Please don't stand on that morph. oh morphe come here honestly sorry everyone that's watching let me just remove my cat oh come here come here, come here. you're so big why are you so big come on fluffy cat go down there you go. Good boy. Sorry, everyone. I know you guys don't mind, but I'm always quite conscious of when Morph makes an appearance because he is. He's disruptive. You know, there's no no two ways. There's no, no getting around it. He is a bit of a disruptive nightmare. But isn't it lovely to have our wonderful little pets involved and taking an interest in what we do? OK, so again, ball tool on these little golden elements. And as we start to add in the coloured elements from the wreath maker, it just brings in just detailing from the background that we've used so the gold edges the gold from the filigree the gold on the the edges of those petals there it draws your story together for your design um lynn's lynn says is he a ragdoll yeah he is he's a very 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 big boy ragdoll but he's gorgeous and very very sweet and very very soft uh carla says i've still got last year's christmas cards to make oops do you know what carla i'm not I'm not going to tell Fibs here. I 
didn't send any Christmas cards last year either. Do you know, I genuinely can't remember if Simon even got a Christmas card last year, which sounds terrible, but um, I was I was battling last year and it was before we'd announced we were having Reuben. I was battling morning sickness. <laughs> it's just nothing was working. <laughs> so I think I can probably be forgiven for that. Um, a little bit of Pimple Blue Gel. I'm snipped down elements from the uh, leaves within the wedding volume. And again, just twisting and turning them in opposite directions to the ferns adds into this idea of the detailing of the curves and things like that it just it just brings those to life anything we cut away is never wasted though because we can just snip and there you've got another piece of die cut we can tuck into the bottom there as well i love the look of this i think this is possibly so far my favorite make of the day which one have you enjoyed most which one are you going to recreate for your card designs too Annette says, don't apologize to Hannah, it's lovely to see more. I'm sitting watching with one of my cats on my lap. Oh, that's lovely, Annette. Thank you. So, so sweet. Um, just checking, I haven't missed any questions. I don't think I have. No, I can see we're going back to the uh, uh, bread and dripping now, which is just making me hungry. <laughs> okay, I think I'm going to possibly leave that. I might come back and add some berries in at some point, possibly. I might see how it just goes. To give you a little bit of balance, and what we can do is include the tags. But rather than having them as a tag, they could be a sentiment strip. So this one, with this nice filigree, which matches your filigree from your detailing here, it's almost like a little banner. Um, and actually, I'm going to have the filigree over the edge. I know it, it's not obviously conducive if you, if you want to send it in an envelope, but you could pop this sort of thing in, in a box. So these are the tags from the um, Full of Love collection. Mounted them on a little bit of foam. I'm going to leave them blank because I quite like them almost as a little banner aspect, just as a little bit of a balance between the top corner and bottom corner. But wouldn't these look lovely uh, stamped with a little sentiment or perhaps you want to include um, numbers, perhaps you want to put like two, five and December on the bottom, you know, from our numbers collections and things like that, just to show it's a little bit of a Christmas card. That would be an ideal placement for a sentiment without detracting from the rest of your card as well. So I'm just having a little look, see how we're looking. Um, I can't decide. Do you know what berries I want? Have I got them to hand? Have I got them to hand? Possibly, yes. Yes, I have. So I've got a whole bag. This is how I keep all my die cuts. Um, the team often send me little die cuts, which is fabulous for each collection, but I keep them all in little baggies. And then they go into um, storage boxes with the dies, with the backing papers, with the card stock. So at any point I can grab my show, I call them show boxes, because obviously me and Carla take them on there, but I can grab my box um, for that collection and everything's good to go. Everything is ready to add in. So here I've got a couple of die cuts of red berries. I just felt that little swag behind needed a little nod to the red that we've got in the background. So again, just using our ball tool, just ball out those berries. Love the shine on these. Again, gorgeous vignettes from our in-house uh, design team there. Uh, just fantastic. They really, really know craft when it comes to artwork. And because all of our artwork is done in-house, you do get this sense of a signature, if you like, to Carnation Crafts. You can recognise a Carnation Crafts card from a mile off. And I think that is tantamount to the team behind the scenes and their artwork designs. Remember, the artwork has been printed on our pro printing paper. Um, because I'm using mirrored vignettes, we are printing these on a 120 GSM uh, pro printing paper. And if you do need a hand with how we print our vignettes, um, and you know cut them and things like that, hop on over to our YouTube channel, we do have videos on how to guides over there. Those berries just draw in that final little pop of colour. And again, it's just that just lifts it a little bit, doesn't it? You've got the red and the roses and it just lifts it, having those red in the berries there. Our final little piece, our final card of our three card demonstration is Rudolph. So this is Whitetail from Tranquil Times. Um, he does have his wonderful aura around him. Gold, I mean, I didn't even notice this originally. Look, he's got golden antlers. Isn't that sublime? And then he's got a little bit of snow flurry down his face, down his head gorgeous soulful eyes and of course his little red nose there as well rather than use him with his aura 
we're just going to take our nice sharp pair of scissors and cut his aura away only because we've got so much filigree in the background of the design um i just felt it's just be better to have um, our deer in a plain finish but of course being carnation they make it super easy to go in and trim away chrissia says sorry where are the berries from please the berries are also from the uh, wreath maker uh, which is the die set we've been using throughout each one of the demonstrations and whereby the vignettes for the Christmas special have been coloured to match as well. And then just snip away the aura. Mandy says, if you rub the back of card with tumble dryer sheets, the ball tools glide better. Oh, that's fabulous. That's such a great little tip. Thank you, Mandy, for sharing that. Uh, speaking of ball tools, I am just going to ball out his little tummy and his legs a little bit. Obviously, I've already layered him up, so he's not going to have too much hang. And I'm just going to pull his little antlers forward as well, because they are, I mean, they are magnificent, aren't they? We want to make a, a little bit of a song and dance about those. So our handsome stag is going to be pride of place inside our circle there. So he has nice prominence. He is going to be lifted up on our three-dimensional glue gel. So I'm layering up um, our pin flare, like so. And just so we've got an idea of sense that he is not just floating or standing on flowers or anything like that we're going to gently lift those florals and tuck his little legs in behind as we place him down so the antlers are coming out of the side of the circle the leaves are coming out of the side of the circle and that gives you the sense that he's very important he's coming forward in the design I'm really happy with that card I think that's really pretty again let me know what you guys think and let me know what elements you might be using and recreating in your car designs too. I will just turn hi the camera background. Goodness me, that was a mammoth one, wasn't it? <laughs> Three demos in one. We started, let me just do a recap for you, with the wedding volume as our backdrop. So here we have the naughty and naughty list and nice list. We've got our Christmas rose on there. We've got the flowers from the wedding volume, the leaves from the wedding volume. And of course, as we've used in every demonstration, the wreath maker tuck-ins. Rather than using them as to create a wreath, we use them as tuck-ins to build our sides to our design. Of course, the happy couple there. So this would make a really pretty anniversary card, a wedding card for Christmas. Or if you wanted to snip away her veil, they then transform that couple into uh, like a carol singers from Victorian times. Really, really sweet. Remember, we cut the base layer of the um, card to make your tent design like so on 350 Perfect Smooth and rounded those pages nicely. And this is great. I mean, you've seen me demonstra demonstrate this similar uh, before for memory books and stuff like that. But then you can add in your little pictures, your little verses, your little sentiments to that design as well. Um, pop some little magnets in between the vignette pages as well before you stick them and then that will keep the pages from from falling open there that was our first demonstration our second demonstration featured ah oh, so sweet a little hedgehog from garden friends pride of place in his backdrop he's got the on the trail from rural charms so the wall and the sty um and then of course We've got the um, sign, which is from on the trail as well, which says North Pole, which I just think is just so humorous and so sweet. Uh, his background has been cut uh, in an easel card design with the Lily of the Valley die set. In the foreground, we have It Was Perfect, a nice little gift box there from Your Too Kind. And once again, we've included the tuck-ins from the Wreath Maker as well. And of course, the little stopper there is from the Ponsettia from the Wreath Maker too. And the card we've just finished, as I say, I will pop up um, pictures of each one of the cards. Here we go. We have our beautiful white tail, Pride of Place. He's been transformed into a Rudolph for our brand new Christmas special vignettes available as today's deal of the day. His background, he's got uh, the wedding volume filigree from the circle. The Christmas rose to the, cent to the corner there. You've got the fern from before the rainbow look in. Once again, those tuck-ins. We do have... Uh, the little tag there as well but hopefully that gives you a few different ways of using the Christmas vignettes I can't wait to see your versions of these over in our group Carnation Crafts so do share them with us because it is really really lovely to see you guys making and sharing your cards as well uh, lots of thank yous coming no thank you guys for joining me this afternoon it was really really lovely um June says, thank you very much. The wedding book is my favourite today. Uh, my wreath making dice set is right today. Oh, that's fantastic. That's really lovely. Um, again, lots of thank yous. Thank you very, very much. That's very sweet. Um, very much appreciated. 
Uh, Maggie says beautiful demos, Hannah. I really enjoyed watching them. Do you know what, Maggie? I enjoy doing them as well because it's nice to have a little bit of interaction, a little bit of chat in the afternoon with you guys as well. Um, lots of thank you, as I say. Thank you very much to all of you guys. Uh, Fifi says thank you so much for doing all of those demos for us, Hannah. You're more than welcome. Do you know what? Actually, it's just fun for me to have a play for the afternoon, so I enjoy it very much so as well. Um, as I always say, take from this what you will. Absolutely go to town, create your own versions of these cards. Do share them in our group, Carnation Crafters. Um, I will actually be back on Facebook tomorrow morning. Uh, we have a show preview. Uh, we are launching um, our new die collection, Floral Heights, on uh, Friday in the UK at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. So I will be here doing a show preview, showing you little sneaky peeks of the collection at half past 10 in the morning. We're having to do it early and I do apologise for anyone in America who um, obviously is going to miss that. But to make it up to you guys, we have got um, an early access show for you guys uh, tomorrow, uh, Thursday. Um, it's three o'clock UK time, which I think is... Oh, Hannah, why didn't I look it up? I think it's 10 o'clock. Eastern Standard Time. Apologies if that's the wrong time. I will pop the, the details up. So we've got Floral Heights launching in the US with an early access show tomorrow on Create and Craft. And then official launch in the UK is on Friday. I will be here tomorrow with a show preview, taking you through some of the die cuts, some of the DT designs and showing you some of the dies as well. Uh, thank you to everyone who joined us. We will be back next week with another Facebook Live. So check out the events pages for details of that when they become available. And I very much look forward to seeing your Christmas card in our group Carnation Crafters. Take care, stay safe and until next time see you later. Bye bye.